In this video, we're gonna go over factoring by grouping things together. At this point, you should be a little bit comfortable with what a factor is and how to get a greatest common factor. And what I'm going to do now is expand on that to factor polynomials in groups when there isn't exactly a greatest common factor across all the terms. My name is Mr. Brash, you can find my website, I've got this YouTube channel. You know, give me a like, give me a subscribe, all those things. Okay, so we're gonna start by factoring this expression here. So we're just gonna practice a little recall on finding a GCF and factoring it. So we have to find the GCF between nine, 18, and 15. Now, because this is a video, I do always recommend that you pause the video and try it on your own. You should have pencil and paper with you right here or something like that, so you can follow along. So between nine, 18, and 15, it is a three, that is the greatest common factor. And then we have to pick out the variables. So we've got x to the six, x cubed, and x squared. So the largest x factor that we can take out, oh, x factor, ah, cool, is x squared. And then the only y that exists here, so it's not common among all three terms, and so we can't take that out. And now we do the, the actual division, which tells us what the remaining factor is. Nine divided by three, that's pretty simple, that's three, x to the six divided by x squared is x to the four, and negative 18 divided by three, negative six, x to the three divided by x squared is x, 15 divided by three, x squared divided by x squared is one, so I could write a one, there's no real point in writing a one, and then the y does not get divided out, the y sticks around. And so now we have two factors, we have a three x squared, and we have this polynomial as the remaining factor. And so that's just common factoring. All right, so just a reminder here that anything can be a multiplier. So any factor doesn't necessarily need to be a number or a letter. It could actually be something larger. It could be a bracket. It could be a smiley face. It could be something like that. So if we were asked to factor this polynomial, we have to ask ourselves, what do these two polynomials have in common? So they have a smiley face in common. The three is not common. The X is not common but they do have a smiley face in common. So if I was to factor that particular binomial, we would say that there is a smiley face in common between the three X and the two Y. So this is like saying the three X had a smiley face and the two Y had a smiley face. This works for all things. What if it wasn't a smiley face? What if it was a bracket like this and X plus one was common here and here. And I, I would love it if you just pause the video and give that a shot, see what you can come up with as to what the answer would be if we were asked to factor that. All right, so let's take a look at factoring something where we don't have a common factor among all the terms. Here in this question, I have a 3x, a 7y, 2ax, 3by. There is nothing common in all four of these things. So sometimes you don't have a common factor. Well, the question is, what can you do? We're going to group certain items together. We're gonna combine items that have at least something in common, and we're going to try to never leave an odd item out. We'll never leave just one. So for example, I wouldn't group the first three, or I wouldn't ever group just three and leave one on its own. Not yet, anyway. We're always gonna try and pick two items that are similar and two other items that are similar doesn't always have to be two and two, but we don't want to leave one out. So I see I've got an X and an X. So I might group those two items together, the three X and the two AX. So I'll just rewrite my statement just by moving items around so that I've got items with their X's next to each other. Now notice I took the negative with it because that's a negative two. And I'll just keep the seven Y over here. It is a positive seven Y and that's subtracting a B Y. So now my X's are together, my Y's are together. I'm going to factor each one of those things individually. So what I mean by that is I've got X's in common here and here, so I can factor an X out and get three minus two A. Great. And I can factor a Y out of these two, and I can get Y times seven minus three B. Great. And so now I've done this factorization, but three minus two A and seven minus three B, they're not like terms. I can't continue, but sometimes we're gonna come across questions where this and this, and I'll color that for you. So this and this right here, these two brackets, they're not the same. But what if they were? And that is what I was talking about up above. Up here in this example question that I made up, 
I've got an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. Well, they're the same thing. And so I can say that they both had x plus 1, and that would leave me with a 3x plus a 2y. And so I'm able to factor that bracket out just like I factored the smiley face out. They both have a smiley face. So we're sort of considering x plus 1 in this example here to be the smiley face. Now in this next example down here, we grouped and we factored, but unfortunately there was nothing in common by the time we were done. 3 minus 2a, 7 minus 3b, there's nothing we can do there. All right, let's try another one. Now here what we're going to do, we're going to expand this one out. Let's expand this out. So 8 times 7, and then 8 times negative y, negative x times 7, and negative x times negative y. So this is after the expansion. And notice that there's no like terms, okay? So I can't simplify this, there's no adding of like terms. We were asked and then factor it. We'll do this in a different color here. What do these things have in common? Can we group them? So I could say, okay, 56 and 8 both have an 8 in common. So I could factor an 8 out of the 56 and the 8y. And what do negative 7x and xy have in common? Well, they have an x in common, that's the only thing, and I'll take the negative with it. So negative x, and I'm up with seven minus y. And so what do we notice here? We notice they both have a seven minus y. Hmm, interesting. And now they've got seven minus y in common, so I can factor that out. I can actually say, hey, listen, both the eight and the negative x had 7 minus y in common. There's another way that you could have said it. You could have said 8 minus x both had 7 minus y. And that's the way the question started. 8 minus x had 7 minus y. So we take a look at these two factors, 8 minus x, 8 minus x, 7 minus y, 7 minus y. We have what we started with. And so this is the coupling of expanding and simplifying versus factoring. If you expand and simplify, you're going forwards. And if you factor, you're basically going backwards. All right. Is this going over your head? Well, if it's going over your head, hopefully right now it'll make sense. Okay, so we're gonna do this example. It's got two parts, A and B. So I've got this statement, five A plus B plus X A plus B. Now, before we go ahead and factor this, and you might already notice that A plus B is common between the two of them, I'm gonna ask a question. If X were a number, say four. If X were four, we would say that this is five A plus B plus four A plus B. And without any multiplying or anything like that, we could actually combine those and we could say, well, I've got five of these here and four of these here. That means I've got nine A plus Bs. All right, I got nine A plus Bs. And if we wanted to go even further, I could say that means I've got nine A's and I've got nine Bs. And if we look at going backwards, if I were to factor nine A plus nine B, they both have nine. And so I could say A plus B both had nine. And so that's if X was four. Okay, fine x isn't a 4. x is very specifically not a 4, it is an x. So I've got a 5a plus b and an x a plus b. x can be whatever we want. And so what can we do? Well, we can factor it. We can't necessarily simplify this, but we can say, just like I added the 5 and the 4 to make 9. So if you recall, to make 9. Well, how did I get 9? Well, I got 9 by saying 5 plus 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. And there were 9 A plus Bs. Hey, look at that. That looks, like, that looks like what we've been seeing before, where there's a bracket times a bracket, which is called factored form. We're going to learn more about that later. And so 5 plus 4 is 9. Huh. Pretty cool. So over here, if I take a look at this second line, 5 plus 4, well, I could say... 5 plus x. And if I was able to add the 5 and the x to make 9, now in this case I can't make 9 because x is not necessarily 4, it's a variable. But what we did was we said that there was an a plus b here and an a plus b here. That's common. I factored it out. If I were to add the 5 and the x together, I would say that I had this many a plus b's. It's not always adding, this could have been a minus x. And that's the idea of factoring, specifically factoring by grouping.
One final example. We are going to factor this. It's got multiple pieces to it, and I'm gonna add a side little piece of information here. If I have positive a minus b, that is like saying that it is the exact same as negative times b minus a. And you're shaking your head going, I'm sorry, pardon? All right, let's check this out. If I multiply this negative one into this bracket, it's essentially what it is, it's a negative one. Here I've got a positive one outside this bracket. So if I were to remove this bracket, this is a minus b. And if I were to remove this bracket, I have to multiply the negative in. So that becomes negative b plus a. Okay, so this is a negative b. I've got a negative b here. This is a positive a, and I've got a positive a here. So that is true. That is very true. Okay, so what I can do is I can factor a negative out anytime I want. Anytime I need to or anytime I want, I can just take a negative out. So if we take a look over here on the left-hand side, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to factor out a negative 1. And if I factor out a negative 1, I get negative a plus b. But we don't like writing a negative at the front. So what we do is we just sort of reorder them. Positive b minus a. We just kind of rewrite it. So we're gonna to have to kind of keep this in mind for this question, it's a big hint. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and give it a shot for yourself before I give away the answer, or at least an answer. So I'm going to treat these as they are. I'm not gonna move things around, let's just factor them as we see them. So I'm gonna factor an x out of the first two terms. I'll be left with three minus y. And the next one has a y in common, so I'll take a y out, and I'll be left with y minus, th oops, I forgot to put the y in front. I'm going to factor a y out and I'll be left with y minus 3. Hmm, something's fishy here. I can't factor this any further. I've got 3 minus y, y minus 3. These are not like terms. But this side note is here for a reason. Let's take a look at the second one. So I've got 3 minus y. Can I do something to make this bracket right here equal to 3 minus y is what I need. I need it to match 3 minus y right there. Can you think of anything that we can do? Well, I can factor out a negative. If I factor out a negative, so the negative that I'm factoring out changes the sign on the y value here. It's kind of confusing. I'll get negative y plus 3. And negative y plus 3 is the exact same thing as saying 3 minus y. So now my brackets match. And we could have taken care of this in the beginning. We could have noticed right away that in, if we just take a positive y out, we're not going to get what we want, and we could have taken a negative y out right at the beginning. And so that now I've got a matching set, 3 minus y, x minus y. Or I could have written x minus y, 3 minus y, that doesn't really matter either. This particular question, very difficult, and a lot of people get confused with it, and I don't honestly believe that I did a wonderful job explaining it just now. A decent job, but there's probably some other people out there that have done a better job. So. Whenever you don't understand something, you watched it in my video, didn't quite get it, I implore you, I beg you, go watch some other videos. Khan Academy, some other uh, math people's, Ontario math teachers on YouTube. There's so much out there. And my way might not be the only way. And my way of describing it might have been poor. So go ahead and post some questions in the comments or ask some friends. And keep learning math and keep practicing.